Hey YouTube, it's your boy Lion Guy Asai. It's also a Monday, which means that it is another installment of The Fundamentals of Go by Toshiro Kageyama. Uh, as you can see, we are in fact on chapter 10. Um, and chapter 10 is about 43 pages long. Um, so we will only do the first two segments, covering the first two Tessuji, the Snapback and the Shortage of Liberties. In this chapter, there will be uh, some more problems with which to test yourself. So if you are so inclined, please pause the video and try to solve them. And uh, the solutions are also in the text, of course. Uh, if you're interested in seeing uh, chat and I working through them, you're free to check out the VOD, which I'll link in the description below. But with that, let's delve right in. The nature of Tessuji. One often hears remarks like, so-and-so is bound to get stronger in the near future because he has a good sense of Tessuji. Just what is Tessuji? To equate Tessuji with technique is neither exactly right nor exactly wrong. It is true that anyone good at Tessuji has a bright future. That being the case, it will not do simply to skim the surface of Tessuji lore, and accordingly it will take a fair number of pages to introduce the reader to just a few representative types, while, if justice were done to the subject, there would be enough material for an independent volume, and more. In this brief space, I will do my best to be concise and stress the essentials. The snapback. As to what a snapback was, someone once described it as a brilliant Don Tessuji. He was right, it is a Tessuji. In spite of that, as one becomes a little stronger, one tends to regard the snapback as merely an elementary technical term and overlook its significance. We shall begin in our usual style by reconsidering this basic Tessuji that everyone knows. Diagram 1. White 1 to black 14 are a well-known pattern in which white invades black's large knight's move enclosure, black 14 firmly capturing the white stone and completing black's outward wall is the proper move. At times, however, the game does not grant black leisure to play the proper move. This is a fairly common occurrence. What can happen? Diagram 2. White naturally goes into action with 1, and on grounds of shape, black 2 also looks natural. Compare it with letting white play too. Actually, to chase white with black two is a great mistake, but both players fail to realize this. Diagram three. Jumping out to white one is almost a reflex action, but black two and four forestall white completely. Even the most ardent flatterer could not say that white has made black pay for his triangle of mistake. White should have looked at the shape a little harder. Diagram four. The first move to occur to some people might be white one. Any such person any such person can be assured that he has a very poor sense of Tessuji and needs to study this chapter. Needs to study this chapter with extra attention. <laughs> a poor sense of Tessuji is not an incurable hereditary defect. Try going through this chapter slowly and see if you do not surprise a few people with your improved style. Diagram 5. Those who immediately think of playing white 1 and 3 and squeezing black into a lump have a better sense of Tessuji, but they should look ahead before they start the sequence. It ends in much the same way as Diagram 3. Even this squeezing Tessuji can at times be a sign of carelessness. Diagram 6. White's diagonal contact play at 1, which threatens a snapback, is the best move. When black connects at 2, white subtly traps him with 3. Black has had it. If he continues at A, white holds him back with B, and however he plays, he cannot escape the tragedy of being captured, at least not without the help of some very bad mistakes on white's part. Diagram 7 It is striking to see how great a change moving white 1 back to the booby point makes. Compare diagrams 6 and 7, study the difference between them, Arouse yourself, and correct such mistakes in your own games. Make those colleagues of yours who view you as a hopeless case change their opinions. Diagram 8. To go back to the beginning, when white plays 1, black absolutely must align himself at 2. The enemy's key point is your own. An amateur would think of black 2 as unimaginative and inefficient. Those who are forever trying to play efficiently place their stones as far apart as they can. That is the one reason they miss so many keep points. 
There are times when black 2 at A is a strong move, but if black plays A here, what will he do about white 2? After white 3, the course of the fight depends on the surrounding conditions, but the moves up to 3 are absolute. The shape does not just occur here, it also crops up in a 3-4 point joseki. In diagram 9, white 11 is the same move again. This shape can also be found in the middle and end game, not just in the corner. Problem 1. Diagram 10. Black to play and capture the four white stones. Presented as a problem, this is not at all difficult. I dare say everyone will get the right answer easily. Would it be so easy, however, in actual play? It is strange how many people cannot solve in actual play what they can solve in problem form. Problem 2. White to play, split black apart, and capture, capture several of his stones on the right side. Answer to problem 1. Diagram 12. Wrong. Is one all black can think of? Try a little harder. <laughs> Diagram 13. Right. If he goes all the way into one, black has a beautiful snapback. No matter how white shifts two around, black can capture him. Verify this. Answer to problem 2. Diagram 14. Wrong. White plays one in three and accomplishes nothing. He can move 3 to 4, but that is still a poor excuse for a Tessiji. Diagram 15. Right. White 1 is the Tessiji. Threatening A and B, B is the snapback, it leaves black unable to defend both places. Brilliant! The lesson to be learned from these two problems is that Tessiji do not come from just slogging laboriously ahead, one stone in front of the next. What is needed is the ability to scent Tessiji's at points like black and white 1 in diagrams 13 and 15, and the boldness to advance to these at first dangerous looking posts. Of course, spotting the first move is not enough, you must read out the continuation, but you have to get uh, so that the first move flashes into your mind instantaneously, otherwise your game will always remain crude and unrefined. How can one learn to see Tessiji in a flash like this? The only way is to immerse oneself in the literature on the subject. Keep studying it until it sinks in. Keep watching for Tessiji, and in time, even the most dazzling ones will become second nature. You must not, however, let your Tessiji get ahead of you. If you do not read out the continuation, there may not be a continuation. When that begins to happen, you may be better off going back to the primitive moves which you understood. You really know a Tessiji when you can see it instantaneously and read out its continuation as well. Superficial imitation does not work. Now for some more snapback problems. Problem 3. Black to play inside white's territory. If you get stuck on this one, heaven help you on the rest. Problem 4. Black to play and kill white. One glance should be enough. Problem 5. Black to play and kill white. He has a surprising move that kills the whole white group, but perhaps surprising is an exaggeration. The problem is not that hard. Diagram 19. Problem 6. Black to play and capture the 8 white stones to the left. If you solve the last problem, this one will not detain you. Problem 7. Black to play. There is nothing he can do inside white's territory. There is nothing difficult about it either. This problem could even be called easy. Problem 8. Black to play. He has a strong endgame move. The answer involves Ko, but not black A, white B, black C. If black plays A, white will reply at C. Answer to problem 3. Diagram 22. If white answers black 5 at A, black has a snapback at B. While if white plays C instead, black A finds him unable to connect. Answer to problem 4. Black 1 and 3 give white the dead form of bent 4 in the corner. Don't mistake this for Seki. Black can ignore 4 and white is still dead. Answer to problem 5. Black advances to 1. If white connects it to, black 3 kills him. If black hastily plays 1 at A, black plays, uh, white plays 1 and lives. Answer to problem 6. Black 1 is the move, and there's nothing more to say. This Tessiji seems 
to be hard to find in actual play, however. Most amateurs would play it A. Answer to problem 7. Black 1 to 9 are a disaster for white. He should uh, play 2 at 5 or play 4 at A and fight a co, but either result is still a success for black. Answer to problem 8. The clamp at black 1 is correct. White 2 and 3 form a co. The mistake everyone makes 2 or 3 times is to play white 2 at 3, followed by black A, white 2, black B, and a snapback. Shortage of liberties. In Japanese, this is sometimes called the tonton or the batabata teseji. Beginners learn it easily, but that is no excuse for stronger players to ignore it. It is advanced applications, and even high ranking, high ranking players will find it meaningful to read this section. Diagram 1 Black to play. Can you capture the three white stones? This problem is the most elementary of, this, of the elementary, yet, carelessness can lead to failure. There is no substitute for being careful. Diagram 2. Black throws in a stone at 1. White connects at 2. Black lets out a cry, but it is too late. This is where the arguments start. Let me take it back. Take it back? Don't try to be funny. The fault is always with the side that wants to retract its move. How is it that people make careless mistakes like Black 1, which are so easy to avoid? They become overconfident. How can I miss? Therein lie unexpected pitfalls. They make snap judgments. Throw in black one and white is captured. They don't bother to think carefully. There is a saying that a lion gives it all its all when chasing even a rabbit. Diagram 3. First black throws in one, then three. Then he patiently descends to five and white is caught. This is the correct answer. For reference, for beginners, white cannot connect because of black A. Diagram 4. Black is to rescue his own stones by capturing white. He is completely trapped behind white's lines, but it is too soon to abandon hope. He has a shortage of liberties, Tetsuji. Diagram 5. Failure. Black is not reading at all. Diagram 6. Correct. Black plays 1 to 9 and gives Atari above 6 if white connects. Counting this connection and Atari, Black makes a clean sweep of white in 11 moves. Just 11 moves! Could you read them out ahead of time? If not, you may as well not play Black 1. Don't give up. Read! What? Me read 11 moves ahead? How could I? The speaker is a 15Q. A 15Q? Even a 20Q can read this much. A beginner who has barely learned the game can read 30 or 40 moves ahead in a ladder. The above sequence is about as unbranched as one can ask. Just the place to start practicing. Read it. It won't read itself. Read it out, visualize the solution, and experience the pleasure of realizing that you can see 11 moves ahead. The confidence you gain will boost you further. You have already seen the answer, but turn back to diagram 4 on the last page and practice reading these 11 moves again. When you can see them, try reading out the succeeding problems uh, in the same way. Find the answers yourself before you look at the answer diagrams. Advanced problems. This time I have assembled some especially difficult problems. Contorted problems. They might be too hard for, most, for some of my readers. Problem 1. Diagram 7. Black to play. Can he capture the, the five white stones? Problem 2. Diagram 8. Black to play and capture not just the three white stones in the corner, but four more in the center. Problem 3. Diagram 9. Black to play and live. Problem 4. Diagram 10. Can black capture the four white stones? Answer to problem 1. Diagram 11. Black's honey at 1 is wrong. White connects at 2, and that is it. Black cannot do anything. Diagram 12. Accordingly, Black has to begin with the throw in at 1. You cannot expect to catch any fish unless you offer them some bait. Black 1 is the bait, and White naturally snaps it up with 2. The nice thing about ghost stones is that, unlike fish, they cannot save themselves by refusing the bait. They are like fish, however, in that if you offer them at the wrong bait, uh, if you offer them the wrong bait, you will never catch them. 
Next, black methodically descends to 3. He expects white to connect with 4 and 6, after which black A will catch him short of liberties, but he is thinking too fast. White counter punches at 4, and after 5 and 6, black is startled to discover that he is the one caught short of liberties. This will not do. Black has a much better move for 3. There are not many choices, so you should see it immediately, but it may lie in a blind spot. Diagram 13. Correct. Although it may be hard to discover, black 3 is the answer. White connects at 4, and black 5 starts a co. A co? You mean black can't capture white unconditionally? If he can, I'd like to know how. Answer to problem 2. Diagram 14. 1 in 3 do not get black anywhere. Such lack of foresight amounts to criminal negligence. Black had better mend his ways or he will never improve. Diagram 15. This is the same as the previous diagram. But look, I'm weak. Isn't it true that a little learning is a dangerous thing? Tessuji's have no place in my game. If that is how you feel, you will never, never get stronger. Diagram 16. Correct. The flash of insight comes at Black 1, a version of the clamping Tessuji. The continuation up to White's capture has to be read out too, but just be able to think of a clever move like 1 should give one a feeling of pride. This pattern appears from time to time in actual play. Occasionally, you should lay aside crass moves like the ones in diagrams 14 and 15, and think of more elegant ones like this. What is a Tessuji? Black 1 gives the answer. Diagram 17. Now, what about the continuation? White 2, etc. are forced. Handing the enemy two stones with black 5 is what separates the novices from the experts. Diagram 18. Continuing from the last diagram, black 1 and 3 pick up the whole white bunch. Answer to problem 3. Diagram 19. Black 1 is a failure. The result through white 8 may look like Seki, but black is dead. Diagram 20. This is the right black 1, but the continuation is wrong and black dies again, a victim of shallow reading. Diagram 21. Correct. This sequence differs from the last at black 5. To avoid failure, black must discard the dogma that he cannot let white connect and switch to the idea of letting him connect at 6, then trapping him with the next move. Black 7 dangles the bait and white is caught. Capturing three stones gives black his second eye. Diagram 22. This variation ends the same way. Answer to problem 4. Diagrams 20, diagram 23. Black descends upon his foe with the honey at 1. White 2 means sudden death at black 5. Diagram 24. If white plays 2 here, he loses again. Note that black does not play 5 at A. That would be a tragic slip. Diagram 25. This white 2 also ends in a shortage of liberties. At this point, I thought black had won, but... White can save himself by connecting at 2. If black plays 3 at 4, white links up with A. The answer is that black cannot capture white. Pardon my mistake. And there we have it, YouTube. We've covered the first two Tessuji, the snapback and the shortage of liberties. Uh, there are four more in this chapter, this very long chapter, chapter 10. Um, but I've decided to space them out because it's a lot of reading, both out loud and uh, on the go board. So next week we will cover the next two um, Tessuji, which are the spiral ladder and um, spiral ladder and the placement. There we go. The spiral ladder and the placement. Uh, arguably, of course, very important. Um, but yeah, with that being said, It'd be awesome to catch y'all live joining chat. Next week, we'll be on the spiral ladder and the placement. And yeah, if you want to check us out live, catch us at twitch.tv slash Um But yeah, I will catch you later, YouTube.